Good. I'm going to call to order the regularly scheduled plan Simsbury Planning Commission. Today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. The time is 7.03. Okay. Um, let's see here. Share the screen. So all who can, please rise and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. I'll take the roll call, flip over to my little spreadsheet. Okay, Holly had just sent a note saying that she's not going to be able to make it tonight. She's absent. David Bloomy. Not here at the time. Aaron Lovett Smith. Yeah, I'm here. Craig McCormack. Here. Alan Needham. Here. William Rice is here. Richard Cortez. Here. Julie Eaton. Here. All right, and then Sean Glenn is an NA. All right. So, uh, both Rich and Julie, I'll ask that you both uh, be promoted to full members tonight and give us a full slate of voting members. It's not that we have any, uh, any items to vote on on the agenda, but it's good to see a full slate anyway. Okay, number three, approval of the minutes of the Tuesday, September 8th, 2020 regular meeting. Alan, could you walk us through that, please? Okay, uh, I don't see page numbers, so we'll do by lines. Lines one through 48. Line 24, my name is spelled wrong. There needs to be an A. L-E-A-V-I-T-T. But it was just a typo because she has it spelled correctly everywhere. Yep. It's okay. Anything else? Lines one through forty-eight. Okay, moving on. Lines forty-nine through ninety-five. Line one seventy. I think Oops. it should be there instead of they. So okay, uh, you're ahead of. Me. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Very proactive, Julie. Well, I thought it was 190, 45 through 190, sorry. You're on 49 to 95. Ah, it's been a long day. Uh, okay. Hold me. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Okay. Nobody's I, got anything there. We're getting there, Julie. Don't worry. On 85, it says something about previous slides, and I just think that should be taken out. So it did come up at the last meeting, and they – did not discuss i think we talked about slides but not at the previous meet so I, I just think it was included it probably shouldn't be how do you suggest it reads there Aaron? we take away um on the previous slides the first if i came up in the last meeting and they did the, discuss because the when they say and they did discuss the word needed to be either replaced or taken out okay uh it was discussed from the commission that the word diversify came up in the last meeting so you're saying strike on the previous slides yeah because there weren't any slides i think that we were having a discussion about us doing a slide a powerpoint but there were no slides we were discussing at that meeting so i, I just think it was inserted in there erroneously I thought there was a PowerPoint we were looking at oh did we oh unless it was the the plan I, I, I was doing the screen share maybe that's how the confusion's there because we were going by pages on the screen share yeah you could, uh, you could take that you could take that as slides oh well, I would say maybe the previous page yeah 
Page. Yeah, let's change and line 85 the word slides to pages. Yep. Okay. Alan, take over, please. Okay. Uh, lines 96 through 142. Um, 125. I think we need to look at the wording. I, on the deed assistance, individuals can't develop. I. So if we go back to 124, Mr. Glidden further explained that from a, a land use perspective, the deed assistance individuals can't develop a regulation to promote those things. It's not clear at all. No. Yeah, maybe maybe I can clarify. I think that was where we were talking about we can't develop a regulation for individuals that are receiving mortgage assistance. Not the deed restrictions. Obviously, you can. That's part of the approval process. But it's the other points that the 830G gets towards the 10%, such as, like I said, the mortgage assistance. So that, should that read, the individuals receiving a mortgage assistance can't develop, um, no. Well, we can't develop regs based on people receiving mortgage assistance is kind of the short version. Oh, so maybe that's just flip those then. Yep. So how would that read then? So for final engines, okay. regulations cannot be developed. Yeah, I don't know how you would want to word that, Michael, but I, it, it just, yeah, the wording, I, it was confusing. I'm just pulling up the page right now. Let me just take a look at it. And like I said, it's going to be something if my computer is going to cooperate. While he's waiting, Bill, I had trouble getting on my internet, so I, I presume you replaced me? Yeah, we did, Dave. All right, I'm quiet. Yeah, um, I'll show you as, uh, I don't know what I'm going to show you as. <laughs> That's not internet connected, right? Well, just uh, Mr. I would say in line 124, say Mr. Glidden further explained that from a land use perspective, the town cannot develop a regulation specific to individuals that are receiving mortgage assistance. And then going into line 126, although they're giving points towards the 10 percent. Sounds better. Makes sense. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to leave it up to uh Amanda to listen to the tape to uh, uh did, do we actually revise the the minutes and then post them? So your your the next meeting minutes reflect the changes that you made by based on motions for the previous month. We, we can't legally amend the mi minutes once uh, seven days passes under FOI. Okay. So Amanda, please just um, show that we amended uh, row 25 to reflect Mike's suggested wording. I, I, I didn't catch it all, Mike, so I can't repeat it. I think it was row 125, correct? 125, yes. one, 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 two, five. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay, anything else on that page? Okay, let's move on to page uh, with lines 143 through 189. Almost, Julie. Hang on. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't it? print it out today. That's why I'm off. No, it's okay. Okay, so. Lines 190 
through 236. Okay. My option was 170. Oh. So I missed it. I missed my opportunity now. <laughs> I think we can back up. We can back up. And clearly, I didn't have any of the other fines that Aaron had, so I might be off on this. Um, but I think it should s state there should be instead yeah. of they should be. Yeah. Or that there, depending on how many words you want to throw in. So change the word they to there, T H E R E. Yep. Correct. Okay. Good. All right, now 190 through 236. Okay, 237 through 283. I don't know about anybody else, but by the time I get through that many lines, I get pretty forgiving about the minutes. <laughs> Lines 284 through 330. Um, 313. So Chairman Rice noted he wants to have deliver more for residents. I, I think it's... To deliver. Yes. have more for the residents or to deliver whichever I don't yeah okay with to deliver bill yeah remove the word have line 313 okay. yep okay um, mercifully the last page 331 through 343 um 328 I think should just be removed I think it was put in twice. Because there was no motion. Yeah, there was no motion. Yeah. So, but it, it was on 335. So I, I just think it was put in twice. So delete three, uh, 328. Correct. Well, wouldn't it actually make more sense to delete well, the the most the statement on 335 motion all in favor. Uh, maybe just add the word motion on line uh, 328 in front of all in favor, none opposed. Well, there's no there's no motion there though. The motion saying, was for the adjournment. The adjournment follows, and then the motion wouldn't follow the adjournment, would it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it would. Yeah. It's Never mind. Show. My bet. My bet. Yeah, yeah, it's just showing the 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 vote for it. Got it. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the minutes as uh, revised? Well, I just found something. Oh. Wouldn't you know? Line uh, 16, 17. According to this, I attended twice. Oh, twice. Jeez, right. But I want double credit. <laughs> okay. So line 17, remove Alan Needham. Maybe Alan just did enough talking to uh, to for enough for two people. Maybe that wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Good man. Or you the were last. quiet last time, Alan. You were. He was quiet. I agree. It was very quiet. You well, listened. I'm yeah. frustrated by this process, to be honest with you. Right, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. So, is there a motion to uh, accept the minutes as revised? Yes, I. I... <laughs> You so I set forth a motion to approve the minutes as revised. Is there a second? Second. Alan seconds. Any discussion? All in favor of accepting the minutes as revised, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm going to abstain. Okay, so we have uh, five uh, in favor, zero uh, not in favor, and one abstention. Motion carries. Very good. All right. 
We had a substantial conversation last time. Um, if I'm uh, understanding <clears throat> what's in the Dropbox correctly, Mike, you've made uh, some changes and now have, uh, I call it a second draft, right? That's correct, Bill. You have an edited draft based on the feedback at our last two meetings. Okay. Um, well, what's what's the commission's? Uh, Is that labeled as what's it labeled as? Because there's three um, versions: one with Bill's handwriting on it, and two others. Which which affordable is housing edited? Is that what that's, it's called? That's yeah. That's the late. That would be the latest version with Bill's comments and the commission's comments from uh, the two previous meetings. The April draft is the original version. Can we share? Um, I, yeah, if you want, you want to go over the edited one. I would. Or, I don't know what yeah. other people. Of course, doesn't want to cooperate. Sorry, my computer's not cooperating right now. So I, I've, I've not had a chance to, to read through it. So can't we all do that together or no? Just to make sure that it's the way we thought it would look? Yeah, there's a couple of things I think we should talk about first. Um, all right. I think we got to the point where we were trying to brainstorm some um, ideas uh, to offer alternatives for affordable housing. Um, <clears throat> I had asked the commissioners to uh, do a bit of homework uh, and try to come up with um, some ideas that weren't already captured, if, if you could. So my first question is, that, does anyone have any uh, any ideas that they want to share? I, I have I have a uh, <laughs> one that'll raise a lot of uh, a lot of uh, eyebrows, I think. Um, so you know, I, I'm just trying to think of, of ways to to increase the the number of affordable housing units in in town. And uh, I, I, I would like to put on the table, and you guys feel free to comment, support me, don't support me, it's not going to matter. But, uh, you know, is there a way that potentially we could utilize some of the uh, town-owned open space for um, conversion to affordable housing units? That's something the commission wants to share with um, the board of selectmen and the rest of the uh, the rest of the town. It's funny, Thanks. Bill. That's that was one of my bullets. It's the only bullet I had. So that, that, that need my only issue with that, and that's down the road, is that I don't want to have a part of town that's reserved for new people to town. I don't want people living down by the river, if you know what I mean. So, uh, yes, open space, town open space should be considered. Uh, any property that becomes available along Iron Horse Boulevard. There was a, a time when we were going to buy some of that parking lot from the state. I don't know what happened with that. Did we or did we not do that, Mike? So you know we, I mean? yeah, we have an option to purchase that still with the state for a dollar. As long as it's for uh, town purposes. If, however, we want to purchase it and sell it to a developer, we have to pay seven hundred thousand dollars. At least that was the price tag back in two thousand fifteen. But that could be an affordable housing site, right down by the river. Pretty, pretty down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, but not that close to the river. Uh, but that would be, if you think about it, almost ideal. Less transportation issues. Closer to public transportation, feet on the street, good stuff. 
So, Bill, does that go with your thinking? Yeah. That, yep. yep. I like that. I like yeah, that. Maybe I should, you know, I, I tried, I, I was really testing the waters to see what people thought about, uh, you know, considering town owned open space. I'm not even sure that that's, that would be legal. Uh, I think of most of the open space is governed by uh, deed restrictions and, and things, but um you know, maybe there's other maybe there's other parcels in town that the that 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 are owned without any restrictions, oh, or could be owned for a dollar. Yeah. Did you have uh, specific open space in mind? No, no, no. I think people have talked about out by the uh, tobacco fields, out by the uh, solar project, out that way. I would be very cautious. I would be to giving away any open space until it was well vetted. So I can't say that I would blanketly um, support that. Uh, I like the idea of the parking lot, but um, a lot of people have put a lot of effort into preserving certain open space in town. So I would really want to know what parcel before I would agree to that. Yeah. So I don't That's like the wording open space. Um, so I, I just have trouble with that personally. But you're but, talking about the cart. We're talking about the horse. I don't okay. care if you're talking something, cart or horse. I, something I don't something like. to consider is all we're thinking of right now. And what I'm telling you, you may like it. I don't. I don't like the word using open space for development period, whether it's 830G, unless I knew what parcel you were talking about. So it is no cart and it is no horse. It's my opinion. That's and I'm fine. Going Your on opinion's record. fine. All I'm uh, saying excuse is... Excuse me. I am going on record as saying I am a little uncomfortable with... I like the idea of that parking lot. I mean, that makes sense. You know, that kind of thing. But open space that's been preserved or... I, I, don't, I would want to know what we were talking about. Yeah, just trying to you know. All I'm saying explore is explore a lot of uh, opportunities. Something to consider. That's I don't know if I'm for it either. All I'm saying is, if we're trying to find a way to find more affordable housing, maybe that's an option we can look at, and then maybe we'll reject it. But I can't yeah. see the harm in looking at it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Though I would want to know that you're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm saying a blanket. I'm not in favor of, but if there are certain parcels and we knew what those were, then I, I would be open to hearing that, but I'm that's just, all I'm saying. Yeah, that's all I'm saying is that um, we look at the possibility what, uh, until I know what properties we would be uh, considering. So what, you know, my, 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 my desire is to um, accelerate the number of affordable units um, compared to the mechanisms that are in place right now. Um, you know, I, I've always, you know, I've said a couple times here that uh, I, I would um, I would be in favor of a, 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 uh, an entire development meeting the requirements of affordable housing. Um, I don't know how we convince a developer to do that. Um, it may not be economically feasible, um, but uh, taking 10 or 15 percent of a development, uh, as we've discussed, you know, doesn't make mathematical sense. Right. So, you know, I'm just kind of kicking around ideas. How do we how do we get big chunks um, without um, all the, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, that the negatives that come along with um, what people perceive to be low income housing? Uh, and things like that. I, I'm certainly not advocating that we that, that we do something like that. And I'm just saying, I I wanted. I'm advocating for open space. I don't. I mean. Yeah. I'll so you know. It, so we have we have two. You know. Um, what do we call it? Uh, not constraints, but uh, you know, we have an objective to in, uh, to increase the number of affordable housing units. We also have an objective to preserve. Um, open space. Um, I'm not saying the two can't happen together. Um, I'd love to know which one's more important. And uh, I can, to you, Aaron, certainly, uh, depending on which open space we're talking about, that the open space would uh, would trump uh, uh, affordable housing. 
but maybe maybe not you know maybe maybe the situation will be different depending on which parcel we talk about understood so bill when you talk about increasing affordable housing i go back to this question again the way it's defined by 830g or houses yeah. that are easier to buy by the general public with less uh, down payment. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys saw the email I sent out. I think it was late last week. Um, given my position on what our what our uh, goal should be, um, and and I I I'm pretty much you know I can't I can't uh, convince myself that anything greater than ten percent would be of um, particular value. Okay. Um, just from the legislative standpoint, uh, you know, I'm not talking about, um, <clears throat> you know, trying to be a nice guy or something like that. I'm just talking about meeting meeting the standard that's that's already there in um, 830G. In 8-30G. Okay. Right. And as defined by uh, by that, uh, you know, I don't know if it's 830G or what. What it, it is 830G, Mike. Yeah, right. It's right in there. Right. <clears throat> and you know. Um, so right now we're about 4.75%. Uh, if we want to get to 10, I suggested that we have a, uh, I don't know if it's a goal or an objective, uh, to increase the, the number of affordable housing units by 1% a year for six years. That was pretty bold, Bill. Well, yeah. uh, you know me, Julie. Cool. <laughs> so just, just to boil it down to you know specific numbers, how many units per year would that be? 90. 90 units? Right, Bill? Yeah, right, Julie? Yeah, uh, probably about 90. Yeah, we need we need to increase it by 800 and something units, I think. So it'd be 90 affordable units with no regular units with them. So it would be a project that a developer builds nothing but affordable units. Or multiple projects. So he's selling... How's this going to work? If he's selling 90 units that are below market rate, how's he going to make any money? For five, for six years in a row. Yeah. That's a hard sell. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I, don't, I'm, uh, I don't know. But that doesn't mean you can't dream it up. Right. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't disagree. It should be a goal. I just, I, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, um, yeah. That was I'm that, not was, shooting that was my that was my very uh, clinical approach to making the numbers work. Um, I, you know, we uh, I'm I'm ready to hear what other people suggest. Well, I took a much more conservative approach, um, not knowing what the true goals of the affordable housing plan is that we're working towards. So I just said incremental improvement by increasing. The number of units in town and seek to have an increase of 1.90 units over the next five years okay yeah this this is almost impossible because somebody has to build a whole bunch of affordable units below market rate and nothing else well remember the you know the uh, mike what, what, what's the repercussion of not reaching 10 percent well, I mean, the, the repercussion is that you're open to an 830G appeal. Okay. Big deal. I mean, it's, it, that's really, it, it, we're talking just specifically to 830G, not the affordable housing issue, large, bigger picture. Um, Mike, when that yeah. happens, does that just have the developer like overrule us on lot sizes and that they can just do 30% affordable? Yeah. Well, yeah. does anyone want to? <laughs> Tell their experiences to Julie. Yeah, that's yeah. What it is. That, 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 you summarized it pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They get to sell a lot of above market houses on a, a small lot when they only have four, they can have whatever, 15. 19. Because some of them are affordable. But they only need 30% of, uh, but they have to do 30%. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, hmm. problem solved. Just make our regulations greater than 30%. And we make incremental improvements. I mean, it'd be very matter of fact, but. Yep. Did we lose Craig? Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. I just had to get up to let my dog in. Sorry. <gasps> I didn't see your name, so. 
Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I just wanted to, you know, continue to learn and understand. See, we need a goal of some kind. Bill's idea is not terrible. I'm not sure it can be, you know, done. But what do we do for a goal here? So could I, I'm sorry, I should have asked this at the beginning. Asked Bill to kind of just practically explain how including the open space would would help here. I mean, just, just give me a practical example. Yeah. So my, my, my thought is there, there aren't a lot of um, large parcels remaining to be developed. So um, I, I thought of, you know, other, other uh, undeveloped areas and open space came to mind. So is it also true that land costs would be minimal, if, not, if nothing, if it was open space? Am I wrong? If, if we said to a developer, you know, we've got these 10 acres sitting around and you can have them if you build affordable housing. That that brings him closer to making some money because he yep. didn't have to buy the land. Isn't that right? So, Bill, to build on that, the reason why I thought that was perhaps a good idea and again being new to the commission on page 38 we talked about the open land and one of the items we had on there on the POCD or am I saying it right yep POCD POCD talks about understanding town old parcels that might not contribute to an overall open space so those could be spread across town so it's not like you're creating a isolated path it doesn't get to the to the bus unit or you know the transportation but it definitely helps explore spreading out affordable units in town uh, i'm sure it'll be met with um, a, a lot of resistance uh, like aaron said a lot of people have spent a lot of uh, a lot of effort to accumulate the uh the open space, but that I'm talking about town owned open space as opposed to land trust or uh, mm -hmm. the other types of preserved uh, protected lands that we have. But that would include, well, okay. Well, do you want just a quick curiosity? Do you want to go one step further and say investigating all? town-owned property not just open space because like i'm i'm thinking of i'm looking on my js right now just i know that at first we weren't going to get really specific to parcels but the town owns the parcel it's on the the western uh corner along uh bushy hill and stratton brook that's not open space oh across from little folks yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we at one time the town was going to put the senior center there and the there was an or, or in a high, high school. school. Yep. Yeah. That's that parcel has always had some sort of development ha hovering over it. Okay, yeah, I, I will amend my suggestion to say all town owned property, including open space. And, and, and maybe I should use the term loosely. I don't the uh, yeah, I, I don't think protected open space would, would qualify anyway. There's too many too many strings attached. You know, like we couldn't develop Ethel Walker. I, that's what exactly what I was just going to say. I mean, that that's open space on by the town, right? But I think I think that one that's a good example where there's open space, but they, we had state funds associated with it, so it's off limits. Like Onion Mountain State Park, that's Onion Mountain Park. That's another one we we purchased that via state funds, off limits. Okay. Development rights are gone. That's true with Ethel Walker. Okay. So for something like this to work, would the town have to be the developer and hire a builder? We can RF. Well, let's go. Let's go back to the state lots. The town does not have to. Well, if the town is not the developer, we have a a price we have to pay the state for purchasing right. it because we're gonna we're gonna hand it off. Um, if we're going to use the Stratton Brook Bushy Hill corner parcel as a, as a different example, there's no strings attached to that one. Um, the town can RFQ uh, 
a potential development there. And then, you know, someone else could actually do all the development co- development of the parcel. And as what Alan said earlier, they can get it on a reduced price from the town. You know, it could be a one dollar transfer to a developer where now, you know, your real estate costs are are nothing. So so now looking at let's just, I'm going to go a different percentage, ninety percent affordable. They're like, well, I didn't pay five million dollars for the parcel. I can I can carry those costs now and do a ninety percent affordable housing development or a hundred percent. Yep. Because it changes their whole portfolio once you take the real estate cost out of it. Right. That parcel doesn't have great proximity to uh, public transportation, but that's the only limitation, really, right? Yeah, and don't limit yourself to those two parcels. I mean, I could start looking around. I'm just thinking of other examples uh, other than the state lots, just just so that we could see the difference. I mean, right. and I want to be honest about the state lots. Like I said, we we take the state lots and we try to develop it and hand it off to another party. We need to be prepared to pay the state. And you know that they're going to ask for whatever that full amount will be. If I remember correctly, there's a whole bunch of infrastructure under those lots that would have to be moved as well. There's, there's another added cost on top of all of that. Um, I think they're major electrical lines, if I'm not mistaken. Fiber optics. Yeah, there you go. I knew it was something major. <laughs> yeah, you know, let's not get caught up in the in the in the details. Let's keep it at a yeah. at a higher level. So I think we have I think we have two good ones. Uh, um, town town owned properties. Okay, investigate the uh, the, p- the potential to uh, convert to um, uh, affordable housing. We also talked about the uh, town um, putting deed restrictions on the. Uh, what do you call those, uh, the, the properties that they don't pay their taxes, tax delinquent? Tax sales. Tax sales. Tax sales. Uh, we're not going to get 90 units a year doing that, I don't think. But uh, So, uh, Julie, what are the numbers you had? Uh, one percentage point? Or, or, I said uh, one percentage point, which is 90 units over five years. Over five years. Yep. Over five years. Okay, I, I admit that the... The plan that I put forward is not achievable. I think it, it, you know, once people looked at the the actual numbers, they would say, you know, you're crazy. Uh, so maybe something less ambitious would be would be better. And I I, I, I strongly believe we need to put <clears throat> you know this uh, objective in the plan. Um, otherwise. You know, we would just there'd be nothing to compare the actual results against to see if it was successful. So, Julie, say yours again. Um, strive for incremental improvement in increasing affordable housing in town. Seek to increase one percentage point, approximately ninety units over the next five years. Okay, so that that's that's definitely quantitative. That's my job, Bill. Well, you started out a little, a little loosey goosey with incremental and stuff, but then you, you brought it back home. I brought it hard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do people think of that? I, I, I think it's you know reasonable. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what do you think? Mike Glidden, what do you think? I like it. I like it because uh, it's it like you said it's a goal it's a little more. I mean yours yours is aggressive. It's just that like you said I don't think it's workable. Right. Um, this is one that we got a number we got to strive for. We have some options that we're we're discussing which maybe you put all those together that gets us our ninety units over five years. Over five years. But here's a here's a question do we say anything about market rate units? Do we talk like moratorium on market market rate units? I'm just playing devil's advocate because yeah, yeah. as you know, as much as, as much as we add those, those deed restricted units. So we add 180 market rate. Guess what? All your efforts just went out the window because they've been washed out by 
more market rate units in the market or in the town, I should say. Sorry. I didn't mean to go backwards on that. <laughs> Interesting point. Interesting point. Uh, I think this is really going to be a wake up call for a lot of people that are interested in this subject. Uh, moratorium on market rate housing. Wow. New, new. Yeah. Market rate. Yeah. Okay. We're all going to have to start living in our basements. <laughs> <laughs> it helps you hit the goal. To avoid, to avoid the flack that's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know. We're stuck, if you yeah. think about it. Yeah, we're we really stuck. I mean, yeah. the idea that we're coming up now is a reasonable idea, okay? Mm -hmm. But show me a better one, <laughs> really. But, you know, I mean, I love hitting goals, Bill, so I loved your, your big goal that you threw out there. There's only 30 plus or minus towns, right, Mike, that have achieved 10%. So it's, I think three. But it was 30 no, it's about 30. But really? also remember, some of these towns are examples being Hartford, right. New Haven, Bridgeport. New London, Bridgeport, where they achieve their 10% is mortgage assistance, rental assistance. It's not deed-restricted units. Yeah. You know, it, you know, there's a few oddballs in there. You're like East Windsor is another community. They're, they exceed 10%. They're exempt under 830J. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I want to hit the but, goal, but there's very few that are hitting it in the whole state. Right. Well, you know, again, I'll, I'll, I'll be cavalier here. Um, but, you know, the, the, the penalty for not reaching the, uh, the goal is not, not that bad. You know, we deal with one 8-30G application every couple of years. I was going to say that same thing. I mean... Uh, not that I think we're all on the same page. We want to try to strive for this, but I think we're all kind of concluding that the real realistic hope of being able to achieve this is challenging. So, I mean, when you look on the other side of it, it's okay. What's the down? What's the penalty? <laughs> you know, doesn't, doesn't sound that bad. So, Mike, by having the affordable housing plan that gives us that stipulation of that four-year moratorium on developers, is that really what this is buying us? No. Actually, I, t I took that out. Remember, we, the commission wanted it out. Yeah. That, that four-year moratorium is something that, let's say we get to, we, we, we add, a, we add a, um, a certain percentage on. that. That's something we can apply to get like kind of a, a relief. But the problem is it just puts a pause on 830G applications. Because once that moratorium expires, we're back into the world of we're below 10%, therefore subject to the appeal. Okay. Um, it's not, I mean, it, and we're not getting, I mean, in the years, in the seven years I've been here, one 830G application. We're not like Milford. We're not like, you know, the Gold Coast and Lower Fairfield County where they're getting inundated with 830G applications. And kind of what Bill said earlier, you don't really have a lot of large tract land that's available. You're yeah, pretty built right. out. And, and, you know, um, all these things we're talking about to increase the, the, the count of affordable units uh, might might be more... Um, disruptive to the town than accepting one or two 8-30Gs over the next 10 years. I mean, the, the key to this is, unfortunately, we have to develop this plan. That's, yeah. we are required, so we have to do it, but you're right. You know, we developed a plan and very likely it, we may not meet the goals because you know, Look, we need a document. A yep. document with some goals and a plan. Nobody says it's going to be earth-shatteringly perfect. I'd like to make a motion to accept uh, Julie's suggestion as our plan. <laughs> I'll check Julie that. write it. <laughs> you want me to type it in? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> 
does, what's the commission's feeling on Bill's uh, Bill's earlier suggestion on exploring um, town properties for for pro for development of, of additional affordable units? I like it. What's what's the harm in looking at it? Yeah, I think that yep. the option should be considered. Okay. okay. Do you want to well, add that as a goal too? I think so. So okay. I think we had a motion. Uh, Craig made a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So he did. Right. Yeah. And then uh, I seconded. Julie, are you typing it in? I will. Yep. Yeah. I mean, please edit. There'll be some grammars in there, right? Grammar issues. Maybe maybe we put this. Um, what do we want to call it? Goal, objective. Uh, I know people like to make a distinction between those two words, um, but I think we should put it towards the back. And we say, hey, our goal is to, you know, incrementally in increase the number of affordable units, um, as Julie is going to write. Um, and uh, after we have that, and then we say, then here are some uh, suggested uh, means to to uh, to get to that goal. Mike, you already have a couple in there, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I think you added the um, the the town. Did, okay, we okay. So what we have in here is small cities program tariff field, Simsbury Housing Authority, multiple family housing. Rehabilitation of distress. Okay, that's the one. Rehabilitation of distressed properties. That's where the town would take it through the tax uh, sale, right? Yep, tax sale. Yep. Okay, and then um, then we'll add another one um, <clears throat> along the lines of uh, you know uh, reviewing town-owned properties for uh, suitable development of affordable units yeah so we're taking out open space right doesn't exclude it but yeah, but you're taking out town open space and just saying town owned land town properties yep okay bill do you want like uh maybe example like i'll show that an aerial of that corner parcel, either the state lots or on Bushy Hill, Stratton Brook, and then kind of a little blurb example of a town owned property that, that could be investigated for development of additional affordable units. So maybe we can, you know, kind of shows. Yeah, that'd be fine, Mike. Okay. One of the town ones did that. I think, was it Essex that had specific? <laughs> that was yeah, right. That yeah. was my next. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that we're going to, but yeah, they had, I think it makes sense. They, they were really specific in theirs yeah. on parcel by parcel. Like we're adding these many units to each one. Yeah. Anyone else have any, any um, novel approaches? And you can, you know, steal them from uh, the website or from uh, the internet anywhere out there. Yeah, Alan, we're not we're not going to suggest um, you know cheap, cheaply made housing in the floodplain down by the river, or maybe you know tiny homes. That, do tiny homes uh, compare or uh, qualify? Could they qualify? That's a that's a buzzword these days. It's it's too bad we can't have a plan with at least a nod to making houses that are just plain more affordable. Forget 830G, okay? I realize that doesn't have anything to do with the 10%. Yeah. But it is possible to build homes that are simpler duplexes, triplexes, no garage, greater density, that it's easier to come up with a down payment for so people with a little bit more modest income can afford them without going through all the traps of 830G. But yeah, so that that we've got that one captured in the multifamily housing option. Consider it has nothing to do with eight thirty. Well, nothing right. to do with eight thirty. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess it wouldn't it wouldn't count towards the affordable housing unit count. Too bad. 
Too bad. It's a good idea. But, mm. Mike, did you have tax credits in there as well? Like, I don't know if there's any tax abatements or anything for that. I'm just throwing out uneducated ideas. Tax so, credits. so we have tax credits that are available for disabled and senior citizens. There's an ordinance for that. In Join the meeting. Um, I mean, that's that's what I know under what I'm aware of under statute. There's we have as options, but those are specific: senior citizens and the disabled. So I want to I want to take Alan's thought and and kind of explore that a little bit. Yeah, um, even though it's outside the definition of what we're considering for affordable housing, you know, by eight thirty G standards, Alan, you're talking about a really affordable home, right? A house that's for the average guy easier to buy. Yeah, you so know how? Yeah, how how do we incentivize? Um, uh, a developer to do that to do that you have to lower his land costs same thing same thing as we've been talking about with 830g or, or have a zone that allows um, greater density perhaps um, if we have zoning regulation I don't think we do but if we had zoning regulations that required a garage you'd leave off the garage I, so I'm talking about a guy that's uh, how do I put this a guy that's got an income of $80,000 maybe a family okay and you say well he can get the 8-30G but he doesn't want the hassles he doesn't want to have the he wants to be able to sell his home when he wants to sell it and if he can make some money on it he wants to a guy that wants to avoid 8-30G that just wants to live in a nicer community with nicer schools and he's willing to give up a garage and willing to have a neighbor 20 feet off his house just like there was a time in my life when i'd have jumped at something like that and it may happen again i don't know <laughs> but that's i wish we could include something like that so how does a developer make money well they build they build duplexes all over the place if you lower the land costs and increase the density, then his margins go up. Well, how about if we? How about if we include duplexes in uh, an eight thirty G application? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, they, there's nothing to stop a developer from putting in quadplexes or triplexes or anything. No, I, I guess. Well, uh, yeah, I guess they could do apartments, right? So. So 830G, if they're going to come in on an affordable appeal, it could be anything under the sun. Yeah. It could be single family. It could be apartments, duplexes, triplex, you know, you name it. Um, anything they want. Yeah, I just think it would be nice if our regulations still applied, that we didn't have all the 8-30G stuff, that we – that. Our regulations still applied. Yeah, you can build a duplex, but we've got some rules. You know, you got to follow these rules, um, and you can build um, housing units for per acre. Maybe you can get, I have no idea, maybe you can get 15 families in there in these quadplexes. But that would hurt, that would hurt our uh, affordable housing. It would. That's the irony. Yeah. Okay. But at, the community is looking for what i'm talking about maybe not duplexes maybe yes maybe no but the community is looking for affordable housing but let me ask you this a different uh, affordable you know simsbury for as long as i can remember has always had the um uh kind of reputation of being a um expensive place to live yeah and and people people still move here um people that can get a big mortgage or have means yeah 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 and now i think that uh the social climate has changed a little bit I where think so too. um you, know, you hear a lot about uh inclusion and uh yeah. and diversity and how that 
um, Im Which improves improves a community. Yeah. Right. And it's got nothing to do with 830G. And if we build more houses like that, it works against us. That's yeah. that's the cruel irony. Uh, I know someone who was telling me the other day that they work with a diverse population. Okay. And that some of these folks, uh, one person, um, their spouses, I'm being vague on person, purpose, but uh, their spouse is an attorney and makes a real good income. And where this person works with the person I know, they have a nice income too. So these are not poor folks. And she, this person, came up with four or five examples like that. And yet they, none of them chose to live in Simsbury. They chose to live in uh, Bloomfield and send their kid to KO. They chose to live in other communities. And so it is a little off subject, I suppose, but I'd like to know why not? Why, why did you not choose to live here? You could have bought a house that you could afford here, too. That's another way. I, this plan we're working on, I don't think we can address that. That's going far afield, but I wish we could. Yeah, that came up last week, at the last meeting, too. I, I, anyway. I just, I, I, I'd like to focus on what are we doing with the plan, because we still have a listening session to, um, to schedule. And that's what you're going to end up, that's what you're going to end up listening to, what I'm talking about. Right, but one of the things that we have said is how do we keep people on subject because this plan doesn't address that it's not and that that's what we've talked about the over the last month is True. How, how do we keep focused on and and i get what you're saying but it's like we're already the end of september we still don't have the plan i have people blowing up my phone trying to figure out when this listening session is going to happen we haven't heard from the board of selectmen that's disappointing um i'm not going to i think and Aaron, I, I think what Allie, we've got. Can I to... just finish? I just want to be able to. I, I appreciate it. So I just, how do we? If we need to stay focused, but then how do we help focus the listening? Because I, I think we will hear a lot of this, but it's it's not what this plan, unfortunately, is totally about. So how do how do we keep it on track for that? So, what the first thing we have to do is stop broadcasting to the public that there's a listening session on an affordable housing plan. That's what our members are doing. And people are taking that to mean that I can go there and talk about other issues. They don't care about 830G. So if we're going to tell the public that we're going to have a listening session on an affordable housing plan, then we have to immediately say, as it relates to 8-30G, the affordable housing statute, and only that. I don't have a problem with a listening session on that, but I think we're setting the stage where people are going to come looking for other things. I've heard people talk about in government, uh, when's your affordable housing plan coming out? They have no idea that we're, we're talking about one that's limited, very, very limited. And if we want to limit it, okay, we want to limit it, but we should tell people that's what we're doing. Well, I don't, I don't think it's a matter of we want to, it's what the plan is targeting. And I can tell you that when people have called me, I've been very specific that this is not about diversity. I know we talked about taking out that word two weeks ago. I've said it's 830G. I explained, I was like the small scope. Every time someone has approached me, I have made it very clear that that's what this is about. It's not this global affordable housing plan so that the people, at least that I've talked to that are coming to the listening session are well aware of that. And I think that's part of what we should do as commissioners. When people approach us, we should be explaining Absolutely. the scope of this plan. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. And anything that's written has to say that. Yes, okay? what, I agree. Whatever's online, whatever we do, it has to say that. Yeah. These, I like people your that are, these people that are coming up to you, Aaron, and asking, How's the affordable housing plan? You mean to tell me all those people are that interested in 830G? Um, well, I don't, don't think so. I'm not, it, it's not clear to me that that's, but they're, they're interested in affordable housing and certainly have been 
you know, over the last several months. And so that's when I've taken the opportunity to say, please understand this is what this plan is. And, and then we get into a discussion. So I feel at the end of those discussions, the people that have approached me have a much better understanding. Um, now, whether that'll translate, that's, that's another story. I also was approached about the zoning commission and that had they been notified? And I said, well, I, they can come to the listening session. So it's, um, but I, I have, I have explained that. I don't know, Alan, I think, honestly, I think as people, and I'm saying they've approached me because they've heard somewhere um, about this plan that um, I'm not sure everyone understood the scope. Um, and so the more that we can get that message out there, I agree with you, the better, because I, 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 I think um, it could get far afield. And I, I don't want to stop anyone from giving their opinion, but it's, it's not going to be fruitful discussion for this plan. Do you know what I mean? It, that's a different forum. I, so um, anyway, it, I like your idea. I'd like your idea of the duplex. I think that's interesting, but it, it doesn't go to this plan. So, No, it doesn't. And, yeah. and it's, it's too bad we can't at least give a mention to things like yeah. that. Right? I, okay. Well, so, uh, Mike, what I'm saying is that whatever sent to the Board of Selectmen that this is the date of so-and-so, that has to clearly state this is only about 830G. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. so Mike, so, then I, I think we need to be. I, I think we need to 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 look at the the draft again because I believe there are, um, you know, uh, strategies here that are not related to eight dash thirty G. You know, I'm I'm looking at how will we meet the goals? Okay, um, let me share my screen. And I agree with you, Bill. I think last time we got a little far afield. So can you all see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So new developments, redevelopments. Okay. This is this certainly is geared toward 8-30G. Mm -hmm. Inclusion of deed-restricted affordable units. Clear. Simsbury Center. In developing the Simsbury Town Center form-based code, a consideration was given to finding ways to attract or spur residential development in town center. The okay. code permits residential development with favorable densities for the developer. Simsbury Center is a walkable and vibrant town center that would be highly desirable for someone looking. The town could uh, consider amending the town center code to include inclusionary zoning function. So Mike, that inclusionary zoning, is, is would that qualify for 8-30G? Uh... Yes. Yeah, that's that would be so. Inclusionary zone is eight eight dash two i. Um, it's on the side. The sidebar is the, actually the language from the statute. So basically, you can set up a reg that has a higher density, but with the intent that it's 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 for the creation of additional affordable units. Okay. Okay. Here it is. The set aside. Okay. Yep. Set aside. The use of density bonuses and the making of payments into a housing trust fund. Interesting. So that one I did not include as a goal, and maybe that's something another th uh, worth discussing. So I think I I explained this to commission maybe two the two meetings previous. The town of New Canaan um, actually uses this uh, option, and what they do is anytime you apply for a zoning permit and it's anything under the sun that you're doing in your house or it's commercial development, a fee is attached to that permit of $50. I'm just using a number. Well, that money is an affordable housing payment that goes into a trust that the town manages. The town actually used the money that was in that funds to increase, to do an expansion of their senior housing facility. Mm -hmm. So basically their housing authority did, did an expansion of several units um, based on the fees that was collected through a, an 8-2i uh, reg. The, the box, that blue box too, Mike, it, it cut off some of the wording. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't, I, I don't know what's, what's going on with that, that it's, it's kind of jumping around when it comes to the drop box like that. Uh, oh, okay. 
Yeah, I don't. It, I saw that too. There was another page that like the formatting is like tweaked, and it's oh, it's so it's it's on the it's, final four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he, do you want Bill? Do you want me to do you want me to do this? So we have we have the document. It's on obviously uploaded to the Dropbox. Would everyone prefer to also? I'll have after the meeting tonight. Email the Word document to everyone so that you have that Word document too, so that yes. some of these little things that are getting screwed by the format. You can at least you have the real document. Yep. All right. Yes. We will. I will do that. Sorry, Bill. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. So now we go on to small cities program uh, slash tariff fill. Um, would that be something that contributes to the affordable housing units? It also can assist individuals that are of uh you know the 80 the lower percentiles 60 80 percent in order to either rehab their homes or as i said at the last meeting um depart the hud allows the federal uh government allows uh, that that program to provide down payment assistance for individuals that are of 80 percent of the area median income but would they less. would it quote would it would it contribute to the number of affordable units yeah there's a there a deed restriction usually is placed on those units that receive this assistance. Simsbury Housing Authority, we know that already qualifies. Yep. Multifamily housing. Um, as this is written, I don't see how it would do anything to increase the number of affordable units. It would <laughs> unless we add something about adding deed restrictions, you're right. right. Yep. Yep. Then okay, so a lot of then, then I, I think I think they can all be they can all be worded such that they would can they would you know be contributors to the affordable housing uh, unit count. That's good. I, I thought there were, I thought there were a couple in there because. Uh, um, well, the yeah. family wouldn't though. Uh, it needs to be rewritten a little bit. Oh, okay. With just one sentence of uh, of, of uh, a deed restriction placed on those developments, and that okay. that qualifies. Okay. It kind of gives us a toolbox. Yep. No, I agree. Okay, and then to this list, we add the, uh, you know, uh, investigation of town-owned properties. And then this is how can how can people help. All right, I want. I don't want to get into this goals and objectives again tonight. I'm not sure we're going to need this. Actually, there's more like a, a timeline. Mm -hmm. So let, let's agree on this. It, it is what Julie what Julie uh, presented earlier and what we voted on is that the goal, or is that the objective? That's the goal. I think the objective is to get the ten percent, right? But our 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 goal right now, per this plan, is to to do how much, Julie? I forgot already. <laughs> oh, one percentage point <laughs> per year. Yes. No, 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 no. Over five years. Over five years. Okay, so let's go back. I, I saw the numbers. I double check my math. So yeah. right now we we have roughly four hundred and thirty two out of ninety one thirty two. Yep. So ninety per point. Ninety is a point. Ninety ninety is yeah a point, and we need to get to uh, ninety one uh, nine hundred and ten. We're already at four thirty two, so it's. 480 roughly not 900 900's a total 91 910 okay so i threw it out there the the you know, the the overall overarching objective is to is to uh comply with the 8-30g requirement but the objective of this 2020 plan is to have an incremental increase uh, on the order of uh, one percent over five years. Yep. 
if we call that the goal the goal of the housing plan is the increment is you know the incremental increase yeah yeah the goal is to achieve the the 10 percent stated in the in the regulation right uh that's not what i'm saying craig <laughs> i'm saying the uh the, the the goal that we're setting forth in this plan does not achieve the uh, requirements of, of the statute. Okay. With the understanding that we could never do it, and it would be, you know, it would be a fallacy to, to put it down on paper. But if we extrapolated Julie's proposal, so 1% over five years, and we need about 5%, five, 5%, 5 it would be a 25-year plan. Sheesh, I might not see it come to fruition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah, you will, Bill. Because if you don't, that means I won't. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can adjust once we once we fast track those first 90 units, Bill, you know, everyone's going to be dying to get in on it. And then we can do two points. In yeah, maybe. Years. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Michael, why don't we formalize what we uh, what we discussed tonight. And um, if you could include that in that version uh, that you send out to the commissioners, I think it's only a couple of things you've had to ask you to ask add. Okay, and then uh, yeah, any any word from the um, board of selectmen? No, they they had the correspondence in their packet at for for the last meeting, but um, I know they had a long meeting, so um, I don't know if they discussed it after the if they discussed it at the end of the meeting or afterwards. Um, and it's their what I their next meeting is the twenty seventh. And I did not see anything on uh, either discussing if, uh, comments on the affordable housing plan or response to um, that correspondence that we sent them. Okay. And I will say, though, just a question earlier, a comment was made about the Zoning Commission. Um, I actually informed the Zoning Commission again last night that this commission is working on an affordable housing plan. Um, and the commission was receptive. Um, kind of going, that is, you know, a role of the planning commission. You know, we would have to try to make it happen at once a, an affordable housing plan was developed, if there's any actions for us. So I think it, you have you have a sense right now, it sounds like you have a, a, the zoning commission cooperative and trying to work towards the goal. Yeah, they just kind of really want to see what we're going to put forth. Right. They kind of want you to take the lead on, you tell us the direction and we'll see how we can make it happen. Okay. Kind of like the POCD. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, Alan, um, you think uh, we made some progress tonight? Yeah, I guess so. I'd like to see something written up. Are we going to show it to the public before our listening session? I'd suggest no. I think we have to. We have to under FOI. Oh, then we have to. Then I guess we will. Let's make sure, like I keep saying, we post on agendas and thing exactly what this plan is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Mike, remember, you know, on the front, towards the front of the page, you have the commission here listed. I think we should do it um, alphabetical by first name and have Alan right at the top of the list. No, <laughs> no I don't think so. <laughs> do do oh, we want phone, number, phone numbers attached to that too? <laughs> phone numbers, <laughs> pictures. <laughs> no, thanks. Address. There's going to be some heat, so no thanks. <laughs> we can weather it, believe me. Mm -hmm. Mike, any um, correspondence, any uh, applications on the horizon? No, no, no. Uh, um Nothing in the immediate future, uh, at least in the next uh, two meetings. I've had a few discussions with people, but they haven't followed up since our last phone call. Okay. I drove uh, by the big Y the other day, and um, 
Looks good. All the paving's done. The road is lined, and I, yeah. I think the, they're getting ready to uh, install the signal lights. Uh, rumor has it they're going to be shooting for a certificate of occupancy for October 15th. Wow, that's only like three, four weeks from now. Three yep. new grocery stores in this community. Somebody's going to go broke. Yep. Time will tell, Alan. Time will tell. And another one in Canton. It's unfortunate. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, the Aldi's going up on Route 44. Well, that's what I meant by three. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yep. But it'll look Alan, like Big Y will be Big Y will be the first of the gates as the the new store to open. I think that location in Avon's gonna be kind of suspect after a while. That's an old store. I I, I agree with you. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that's on the market. So oh, no, that's you know, Mike, we hear all the time about how difficult town hall is with people with land use applications and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You guys are pussycats compared to Winstead. Let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> what I've been going through. Unbelievable. You guys never treated me like that. It's tough up there. It's really tough. Good. To, we got to up our game then, Alan. No, no. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, their building inspector is an interesting man. He's difficult. So, Bill, can I ask a question? I'm a little confused as to where we're at and where, where we're going for the next meeting. So I know, like, Julie likes data. I like to have kind of a roadmap because I'm kind of um, – are we going to review – the plan next meeting and then mike, mike is mike is gonna mike's gonna make the changes to the, the 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 edited version okay which presumably capture the changes that we discussed last time and the few changes that we discussed this evening okay. he's going to distribute the word document so it's in a native format so it looks the way that he wants it to look as opposed to little formatting snafus that happened when you made the pdf uh, or I guess just looking at it in the uh, Dropbox, in the, in the in Dropbox, yeah. Um, and then uh, I would suggest that people, uh, you know, read it and come prepared next meeting to be the final session, and and uh, we will have a uh, our let's call it final. Uh, I don't know, version one. Let's put it that way. Something that I expect to, that will be suitable for dissemination uh, prior to the listening session. Mike, are we, are we obligated to have it out in the public for X amount of time? So do we have to give two weeks, four weeks? No, I mean, because you're just having basically a workshop or a listening right. session. You don't have any sort of statutory requirements. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, the only not, thing, the only, I should say, you have one requirement uh, under the executive order. As long as we're still in the remote world, it has to be out a minimum of 24 hours prior to the meeting. Okay. So that's what's, that's the minimum. It would be nice if we, after we meet, let's say we shoot for the 28th to have the listening session. If there's any follow-up from our next meeting that, you know, we'll try to get that document revised as a final by let's say the 13th. And that way we could, post the agenda for the 28th with that revised document that would give that would give basically two weeks for someone to 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 see that online october 27th you mean i'm sorry i'm looking yeah that's a wednesday okay wrong day of the week for me oh that's okay i'm just thinking out loud yep that way that way at least we can you know because so i wrote down for me for my goal is I'm going to get you the Word document with the changes that we discussed tonight, by preferably by the end of Friday, Saturday, the latest. So that gives you time to look at this this week. Or this coming week, I should say, yep. prior to our next meeting, if that's acceptable with the commission. Yeah, that, that's fine, Mike. It would be good to have a whole week for us to, uh, to, to digest. And, and and commissioners understand we've had very little input up to this point from uh, you know the board of selectmen we have have asked them so that's still kind of a wild card. Um, 
we have not specifically shared it with the uh, zoning commission. Um, so we may get some some pertinent feedback from them when when it's uh, you know published. I'll say. So, hey, we'll see how it goes, right? We had to get we had to get something to, to throw up against the wall here, and I think we've, uh, you know, we we've done our due diligence. Um, we've really kind of uh, considered a lot of angles and um, and trying to spend any more time on creating the document. I think is going to be uh, diminishing returns, um, considering we, we're, we're we'll probably get significant input from from other parties at this point hey bill so you know how we had talked about how to format a meeting and get input from a public if we're going to be virtual yeah and it could be challenging when you have a whole bunch of people trying to speak yeah i'm gonna throw out in the chat um it's a free collaboration tool that i've recently learned about if we want to consider it, I don't know if there's any restrictions in how the town hosts public listening meetings or not. Um, but it's a pretty cool tool where you can like pre, it's sort of like a virtual post-it note. And you can preload it with ideas and people who are attending, if you share a, your special board, people can vote on it. So I just wanted to share that for people to consider um if we want to consider using this or how to structure okay or yeah I, I do have some concerns about um trying to keep order yeah um you know because when we have a public hearing in a room it, it's easy enough to identify someone who comes up to the podium and, and you know states their name and address uh one at a time and um i, I don't know how many people to that we would expect for this listening session um mike have you had any any experience with that so so we've had um the historic district commission has had several public hearings via zoom um we've ran it, it it's it's worked it, it, it we, we it, we've ran a tight ship on that um and kind of laid down the the groundwork right from the beginning telling everyone we did a roll call who was at the meeting and then told everyone, you know, you had X minutes to speak. And then the, the chair would, you know, move on to the next speaker. Um, the other option you have, if you don't want the public to call into the meeting is, and this would be put an onus on getting an agenda out quick, is following the executive order and saying, if you have comments, you are to email your comments to Mike Lydon, the, 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 the town staff, and we would read the comments at the meeting. So basically, there would be a meeting with the commission, and we'd be reading a bunch of letters to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the other option you have. Uh, have people, you know, uh, people from the public um, been pretty receptive to and orderly. In, so, in the historic district commission, I will say they were uh, receptive and orderly. The board of selectmen is just starting to open up to take public audience comments through live. Uh, um, individuals got coming into the zoom meeting live prior to this last meeting they actually have been uh requesting that everyone put their comments in right and in, in writing and they will read the comments into the record at each meeting and they they did uh the, the disposition of open space public hearing um that was done reading the comments from people who emailed them into the town clerk so I mean, it's you got those two options. How you want to do it? You, do you want the public to be have the ability to call in? And I'm not looking for an answer right now, or we can have you know you have the ability to tell the public, listen, email your comments and we will read them in. I don't know which one. You know, obviously controlling it by having the comments emailed in, it's it's it doesn't go out of hand. The the wild card of the mix is. Having everyone on, yeah, on and board. I know from the beginning, um, Alan, you know, Alan's uh, belief, and, and I agree with it, is that we don't want it to become a dialogue. Uh, right. You know, uh, we don't want to. We don't want to have to at this point support what we've what we've written down. Right, this is still a draft, uh, and um, it truly is a listening session. So, in that respect. 
um yeah written written statements um would be good but yeah i i don't i don't want to that word muzzled does that occur to you yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was gonna say i don't want to i don't want to have anyone have any ammunition to say that this was uh, you know a clandestine operation right. and unilateral decisions and i was muzzled yes yeah, muzzled. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I think yeah, the, the biggest thing I, we're going to have to contend with is the the, the definition of what of, of what we're doing here. Uh, we just don't. I I don't think it's productive to go back and forth. You know, to yeah. answer questions, debate things. I think we should just see what opinions are out there. That's yeah, it. yeah. So so here's another option. I was just Laura, Laura just came up with this idea, so I got to give her credit. So we put an agenda up. And we have those individuals wishing to speak have to register with Laura prior to the meeting. So it's kind of, I, I hate to say it's like signing in, but, you know, we have them sign in. At least that way we have, she would be in charge of, she'd be the mute police while they're not speaking. And maybe that's the other orderly way we can have them call in via the Zoom meeting. Yeah, I'm just, no, I like that. So Laura's going to be uh, the uh, meeting police. Okay. Should be the moderator. Our moderator, yeah. You don't have a way to raise your hand like in Teams, so if everyone's muted, how would she know who wants to speak? We, we'll, we'll come up. I, we're, think, I, we're thinking something up right now. Okay. Maybe just by a list, by, you know, one by one, who signed in, and then, you know, that list would be shared with the chair. So the chair then would call, okay, Ms. Ms. Aaron Levitt-Smith, you're next up to speak. Okay. Who's Dawn? That's Murphy. Oh. <laughs> My dog is liking Murphy's talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay then. Any any uh any other comments, uh commissioners? Rich? No? Okay. Craig? Nope. I think it's been an interesting uh, conversation. Julie? I've said plenty. Aaron? No, nothing more. Alan? I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> <You are home. laughs> okay. That's the can... nice thing. You don't have to drive home now. Yeah. Right. All right. I think we've concluded uh, our, our uh, actions and uh, agenda for tonight. So looking for someone to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Craig makes the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Aaron seconds. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to adjourn, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously, 6 zero, zero. And the meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody.